Welcome to Makerthon. I'm so excited to launch Makerthon with you. I am Michelle Stevens of Bar Lazy 7 Designs. Some of you know me as Amy's crazy counterpart on Mondays and Fridays or whenever we decide to go live. Um, we love to create together. We've been friends for a long time and so it's a lot of fun. But today I'm here to show you something really fun that I have played with with the ceramic paints. Um, I am from New Mexico. I love the mountains. Geodes and rocks are a regular part of the area that I grew up and my great grandmother collected rocks. And so she was this hunched over little 90 plus year old grandma because she was always walking around with her face down looking for rocks. And so her sweet husband got a tumbler and learned how to polish them all. And we have some really beautiful bookends that are natural geodes that they found. Um, purple quartz crystal. We have some that are kind of red um, and black. But the green and the blue remind me of growth and spring reminds me of nature and it reminds me of New Mexico and it reminds me of the green and the growth and all of those things. And so um, I've been playing all week with this technique. I am using ceramic paint on glass and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's like a watercolor and dirty pour all at the same time. Every one of them is different. I have made four and none of them look the same. I've used slightly different techniques because I've just played on all of them. Some I flip it over like this one. This is the clean side of the glass. This is the painted side of the glass. Some of them I like this way. I flip it and I think this is the prettiest. So on this one, I actually spray painted the back with white to give it that depth. But on this one, I liked the side I painted better. So this is the technique I'm actually gonna show you today. Um, I have one that I've already finished so that I can just show you how to gild it to give it that beautiful depth and really pull out the gold in those corners but this is the actual side that I painted. So um, this is what we're gonna work on today. I'm gonna show you how to watercolor it. I'm gonna show you how to clean your glass. I'm gonna show you how to be careful. <laughs> All those beautiful things. So I'm gonna put this up here and clear my space just a bit. Um, the reality is my friends, you are working with glass. So anytime that you're working with glass, you wanna be careful. I have mine actually wrapped in a tea towel right now. And the reality is glass does not like extreme temperatures. So if you are storing your glass outside in your garage and it's warm and it's air conditioned inside, you need to bring your glass in and let it warm up. If you are warm, like it's winter time and you're storing in your garage and it is cold, you need to bring your glass in and let it warm up. So you really want it to be room temperature. You wanna keep it, um, you don't ever wanna work with it at extreme heats or colds. You want it to be room temperature with the rest of your items also being room temperature. So I'm going to turn this down just a bit so I, you guys can see how I wash. I have it wrapped in a tea towel and I just got this glass at Lowe's. They actually cut it for you and I lay it on one side of a tea towel. I have glass cleaner and I spray it on and with my other side of my tea towel I wash my glass. Sometimes I lift it up so I can get to it. This table's not super sturdy. <laughs> and I just wash so that I have a nice, clean, shiny surface to work with. And then I flip it and do the same. So both sides of my glass are nice and clean. And the cloth is protecting my hands from um, being cut. And just know, like, anytime you choose to work with glass or even plexiglass, there is an opportunity for you to be injured. So um, be careful, watch out for yourself. All right, I'm actually gonna paint on paper towels because it can get really messy. Um, so I'm again going to move this with my towel, put that down. And I use the edge of the towel to lift my glass up and then I'm gonna pinch it with my fingers and put it on my paper towel. So when it comes to mixing, I am working ceramic paints and I'm gonna show you guys how I made the color, but I'm gonna use the ones I already have mixed. So I added blue and I just squirt some in there. It's not an exact science over here. 
I like to experiment and play, but I wanted a really deep blue. So I added just a little bit of the black ceramic paint. And then I added water. And really, I just pour some in there. Again, not an exact science. I want it pretty watery. So I get it all stirred in. And then I decide if it's the consistency I want once I have it stirred in. If it's not the consistency I want, I'm going to add more water. Because like I said, this is going to be a watercolor, dirty pour type of technique. You're kind of mixing both techniques. And that is maybe a tiny bit thick, just a couple more drops of water. All right. So that is how I mixed um, my paints. I did, you're the water to my ocean with black. I did green with envy with black. And I did white by itself because there's oftentimes white components in a geode. Sometimes it's very overwhelming and sometimes it's very subtle. So those are in there as well. And then this is the other thing I'm going to show you to mix. This is mica powder from Amy Howard at home with glazed over. I wanted a gold and I had thought about just gilding, which I also am doing. But what I found is when I add the gold to the actual um, glass surface, the way that it reacts is really beautiful and it kind of feeds into all of the other colors and just makes it completely different look. So I'm going to give my glazed over a little stir. Typically when you are mixing a glaze, you're going to go um, one part glaze, one part water, one part paint or whatever pigment you're using. Um, I actually went less on the pigment because I still wanted it pretty runny and the pigment will thicken up your, um, so I'm doing about this much pigment in this and I'm just going to mix and it's really fun to watch this mix together. Look at that guys. It's so pretty. And this is the deep gold mica powder from a maker studio or from Amy Howard at home. And it is amazing. Look at that. So this is what we're going to use. And the technique is however you want to do it. I can leave that out. Let's do the green. These are just the colors already mixed up. Here's my green. Here's my white. And I've just had them in an airtight container so that I can reuse them. So I started with the blue um, because it's kind of the base color that I wanted. I'm going to drop this a little bit more so you guys can watch me work. And I start by just kind of making that uneven line. And it's really runny. So you see, I'm putting it on pretty thick. I'm not worried about it. And then I'm going to want green next. So I'm going to get a new brush. And I'm going to do the same with green. And I'm going to kind of let them hit each other. Now, when the barriers meet, because when you're working on glass and you do the paint, it almost builds like this little barrier. Well, when you break that barrier, um, it kind of bleeds into the other color, which is exactly what you want because naturally in a geode, the colors bleed together. And so now I'm gonna take some white. You see, I left this opening right here. I'm gonna put the white right here in this opening. Do you see how the green is bleeding into the white? Same thing here. Just gonna let those bleed together. Now from here, what I would do is I'm gonna use my paper towel and lift the edge of my glass and I'm going to let it run and I just kind of let them run together 
and try to stay inside of that barrier that's been built where the green will bleed into the blue and the blue will green into, bleed into the green and the white kind of bleeds into all of it. And that's where you get these really pretty swirls with the white. And I just keep layering this way. So then I'd go on to some more blue in here. And then some green. I hope you guys are having fun. This is like the most calming technique. And I love it because nothing turns out the same. Everything is different. So now I'm going to start touching in some gold. I want this section in here to be a good chunk of gold. What happens with the gold is it also bleeds and it'll keep bleeding into the paint. And so it lightens up when it dries because it's bled into the other colors, which adds this mica dust into all of the colors. So it's really a neat thing that happens. And y'all seriously, I've just been playing. So I do it and then I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what that does. And sometimes it turns out different on every one. Look at that. Do you see how it's bleeding into the other colors? And I haven't even done the drip technique yet. I've just put it on there. So now I'm gonna just drip some more, let them kind of bleed into the gold and then I'm gonna bring it back down and let it, I'm trying to turn it so you guys can see it happen. So I'm just gonna let it kind of drip towards the end of the plate, but then I'm gonna bring it back because I don't want them to just drip off. I want them to have some stability to them. So I get back to a normal state where I have these clumps, just like I would if crystals had formed inside of a stone. So this is the technique I used. I just kept going and going and going until I got the look that I wanted. Now, here's one I finished. And this one, um, I actually added some salt to. You can kind of see the granules. Um, if you've ever done watercolor, you can add salt to watercolor. And typically what it does is it makes, I'm going to pop this up so you guys can see. Typically when you put salt in watercolor, the salt bursts. So I wanted to see if that would happen with the ceramic paint since I've added water to it, if it would make the salt burst and give me more of that kind of bursting effect. It did not, but what it did give me was a lot of texture. So I went ahead and um, actually spray painted the side with a clear lacquer so that it is good and solid and the um, salt isn't going anywhere. And what we are going to do is gild on the back side and we're going to see that depth come up. So I'm going to turn it back down and we are going to talk all things gilding, my friends. So gilding size is created just for gold, silver, copper leaf. Um, I use Amy Howard at home and a maker studio gilding size. I gild a lot um, because I love the technique. So gilding size, you're just gonna go ahead and paint on just like you would a solid layer of paint. And I'm just painting it onto the whole back of this glass. Now you want gilding size to come to tack, which takes sometimes 10 to 15 minutes. I'm putting on a super thin layer so that ours will come to tack faster than that. Um, so that I can actually show you that technique. So once I get this gilding size on, we're going to pop back to the one that we're painting and just paint a little bit more while we're waiting for this to come to tack. Okay. See, really fast, no big deal. That gilding size is on there. I need it to come to tack or the gold leaf is gonna kind of smear and not really hold. So that's what it looks like with gilding size on it. It's just a little milky. And I'm actually just gonna trade out my paper towels. So we're gonna put this paper towel up there and we're gonna put this one right here. We're gonna play a little bit more with our colors. So I think I wanna put some white in here. So we're gonna drop in the white down here. 
And like I said, when I put it in here, it bleeds. So I want to show you guys another cool technique that I was just playing with, but I liked the way that it turned out. Um, sorry, my brain is a little scattered and excited when I get into this creative mode of things. And we're going to put a little gold in this center down here. Okay. So again, I'm going to let this run just a bit because I want there to be depth right in here at what would be my center of my geode. Now, what I did find, depending on what shellac you use, when I use spray paint on um, the geode effect, I didn't have it happen. But when I used clear lacquer or a clear spray paint, um, it's this Krylon clear glaze. It's got a high, high sheen. When I used it on the front side, it made my white ridge up like a mountain. It was the only time it happened, but it gave it the coolest effect and this really amazing depth to um, what I'd done. So I was super excited about it. It looked incredible. So I'm going to do a white line all across this top. And I don't care if it's, you know, I don't need an even line. This is, we want it to look like a stone. We want it to look like it was naturally formed in the earth. These could be mounted on matte paper. These could be put into box frames. The options are literally endless as to what you could do with these and how you could mount them. I just have mine standing on little stands, as you can see behind me. Um, but there's limited possibilities as to what you could actually do with these amazing um, tiles that you're making. These pieces of glass were just about four dollars a piece okay we need to get back to our gilding size so i'm going to run this really quickly down this side because i want to see it happen i'm going to try and turn this for y'all can you see that happening and i might just pop it a little bit with my finger so that that can bleed better there we go now, I told you I'd show you a technique that I did that I really loved the outcome of what it did. I took the white and I loaded up the thing and then I just hit it. So there are these white specks throughout and they will also bleed naturally. So I'm gonna leave that one to dry over here. And we're gonna bring back this one. And I'm gonna be honest, my Gilding size is not completely to tack, but I'm going to do it anyway, just so you guys can see how to gild. So I have gold leaf from a maker studio and I am going to work with the tissues that I have. You have sheets of gold that are in between tissue paper, um, full sheets. They're six by six. I hold the back the top corner and the spine. And I'm going to lay it down on my piece and I'm going to burnish it while it's still in the booklet. Let it lay on there. Then I'm going to do another one and it's okay if they overlap. You actually want them to so you don't have any holidays or weird lines. So I'm going to let this one overlap right here. And just burnish it. Now, I have these smaller sections right back here that are not covered at this moment. Let's put this down. You can see them right back here because um, this is actually wider than my leaf. And I have some smaller pieces of leaf. And that's what I'm going to use. So I have this piece that's not completely full that I've torn off using some other time. So I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I'm going to pull it off and do it. There we go. And then I'm going to use my tissue paper to burnish it anyway. So when working with gilding and leaf, you're going to use a chip brush once it's sat on there long enough. And 
and you're just going to burnish it in one direction. And what that does is it lets the gold really connect to the um, gilding size. If your gilding size is still wet, you're going to see this happen. Do you see how it's pulling away right there in the center? And you can see my scratch marks. That is because my gilding size is not dry. If that starts to happen, just take a little break and go back. Thanks for joining me today. I had a great time. Enjoy Maker-a-thon.